Serrano García. Presente. Chantel Davis. Presente. Cal Tran. Presente. We are here fighting for us and for them. Their wings are surrounding us and they're watching our backs. Thank you. All right, I want to touch real quick, and um, I want I want to say because uh, I'm going to reiterate this a few more times. We have a a route that is planned. There's a reason it's planned. Okay, there may be people here for with a different agenda, a different idea of a route, uh, an idea that we that we've cooperated and given the route to the police. No, none of that. First off, the reason we have a route is we're going someplace. The reason we're going someplace we're gonna we're gonna go support other comrades. Period, right? There's a reason for this stuff. We've been planning this. Hundreds of people have planned this stuff. You want to help us plan this stuff? Show up at a meeting. Don't show up at, don't show up at the action and, and come here and step on people's toes. You want to make a left when we're all making a right? You can make a left, but don't tell everybody around you they should make a left too, right? It, it, like, it, you can do whatever you want to do. You're grown. I'm not going to tell another grown person what to do, but what we are doing as a group when we are following these banners is we are, we are here to represent representing for Black Lives Matter, representing for Yvette Henderson, and representing for all the lost lives against uh, uh, that, that have been lost around a police terror. And I want to talk about police real quick, because we're going to have to leave exactly at 11, and, and as soon as I get, as soon as I keep talking till about 10 to, somebody wave at me, because I want to make sure to gather everybody up and, and leave 10 till instead of just uh, uh, 10 till the hour. Real quick, oh, the reason I want to touch upon police is they think there might be a good cop. See, pol the police in itself Especially in the Bay Area, when 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 the black folks were first first off the plantation, and they and they and were getting out of the South, and they came out here to work in the canneries and the but and the butcher houses and, and and be service and everything, they were like, man, these are some good hard workers, but we can't control them. We can't go into their juke joints. We can't go go into their neighborhoods. We we don't know. The sheriffs didn't know what to do, so they went and got the overseers and, and, and the slave catchers to come out here and be the police out here. So the the this type of mentality, even if the police officers black or Mexican, they have a slave catcher overseer mentality that we are the we are the, the subhuman lesser perpetrators and they need to they need to protect society against us. Even though I'm not a perpetrator, I'm a father, I'm a blue collar worker, uh, I, I'm a black man, but because they don't like what I'm doing, I'm a perpetrator. And they'll and whatever in my past they'll use to criminalize me to do whatever they want to do to me, right? And besides the slave, I want to touch upon this, besides the slave catchers and the overseers that were brought in, especially in the big cities, and, and, the, and, and the communists and the unionists here can, can vouch for this, especially in the big cities when, when people were so poor and so broke in all these cities and the factories are closed and the corporations at, those, at that time were stepping on the, were stepping on the working class and, and pushing down and had strong anti-union leanings. The ILWU, two members of the ILWU were killed in front of the ILWU Union Hall in San Francisco back, I think it was 1916, for this reason, that, that the corporations were, were stepping on the actual people, not just black people, but people, period. And they, they made police departments to suppress the insurrections of that time. So, so if you understand, the police were not made to protect us, they were made to control us. Right. So they were either made to control us by the overseers and the slave catchers to control the small population of black people or they're made to control the vast population of the working class and to keep the working class in line. See, that's why I'm also an anti-capitalist and a black revolutionary. So uh, I'm trying to look for some there was supposed to be some more families that were going to speak. I wasn't planning on speaking this much the entire time. And they're not here. So, let me do a time check and see if I can bring up my co MC real quick. If I can find him. 20 minutes to line. Line it, Mark. All right, thank, thank you very much. I'm not, I'm not sure who said that. Um, Hi. Um, I wasn't necessarily planning on speaking. I was hoping that my sister, Gerilyn Blueford, was going to be here. Um, she has a long travel from Tracy, and so she may not be able to make it today. And she did ask me, in case she couldn't make it, to speak on her behalf um, and for her son, Alan. And I'm wearing him on my, my special protective badge here that I like to wear. Um, when doing things like this and when connecting struggles, we're here 
today for yvette henderson i was just spending some time back with her brother jamison these are real victims real people who these murdering pigs steal away from us and the men standing there and up on the roof may be thinking but i'm not a murdering pig i didn't pull the trigger well, you're all just as guilty. You know, the whole system is guilty. That's right. There's no such thing as a good cop until one of you takes the first step across that blue line, that thin blue line that ain't so thin. There's not going to be progress until we all join together to end police terror, to end what has happened to Jameson and his family and our community, what happened to Alan at the hands of police officers who act with absolute impunity and zero accountability. The, the whole culture is guilty. You are all guilty until you start speaking out about the injustices, about the corruption in your department and in departments across the nation. I work at the Allen Bluford Center for Justice, and, and I used to be a nurse before I do that, so I, before I started doing this, and I have this, this I think, this, this drive in me for healing, you know, because that used to be what I did for my work, and now that the, what, I, what I dedicate my life to and myself to is a different type of healing. It's healing the community. The community, it's helping to heal. I can't do that on my own. It's helping to heal the community affected, especially the community affected by police terror. And something that my sister Geraldine said is that each and every time a Mike Brown, a Tamir Rice, an Eric Garner, an Yvette Henderson happens, each and every time that happens, her wound gets infected with their crap, their lying, murdering crap. Lamisha's wounds get infected every time the wounds are never allowed to heal because they're constantly getting filled with crap. And let's say it like it is, it's shit, it's bullshit. It's just horrible. How can anybody ever expect to heal when we are constantly being told black lives matter less and the law says it's just fine? Brown lives matter less and the law says it's just fine. Mentally ill, trans, whatever. As long as you're disenfranchised and marginalized, which is on purpose, your lives are valued as less and the police are allowed to murder you simply based on that thing about you that makes you different, be it your skin color, your sexual preference, your gender identity, whatever it is. The police target people to make us feel terrorized. Terrorized. They don't make us feel safe and protected unless perhaps you live up on the hill somewhere nice than your lily white pad, which I don't think that's where most of us live. So for me, what I think of as justice for Alan Bluford, you could fill in any name into Alan Bluford because what it really means is there will be no more Alan Bluford's. And if there are, it is our job to make sure that they are not allowed to act with absolute impunity and zero accountability. And it's not just us. We know that we are like a wildfire, that maybe, maybe we started that spark here in Oakland, you know? Maybe back with Oscar Grant and times like that. Maybe that spark got started here, but we have spread like wildfire across the nation. And it's not only in Oakland where people are starting to open up and realize it's not just Oscar Grant, it's not just Mike Brown, it's not just the names we hear in the news. People are starting to wake up across the nation and we have ourselves here in Oakland to thank for leading the way in this fight. We have to keep telling our brothers and sisters about these actions that are happening. People think that we've done this and it's enough. This didn't end back in the civil rights era, back in the 50s and 60s when we had our marches then, it didn't end. They are still killing us, like I said, and they're getting away with it. So we have to keep going. We have to keep the pressure up. It's beautiful to see you all here. The next time we gather, make sure you tell your mama, your granny, your uncle, your cousin, and your neighbor, because we need to see them out here too. This, is, this struggle belongs to all of us. Um, I think that I've done enough chatting. I see Adam is ready here. Does anyone know if Kadeen and her mom, Angela, have shown up? She's on her way. That's, I think, the other family member who we are waiting for. And we have 20 minutes. We have a hard and fast time that we... 
we got about twenty minutes until we need to go we do have a hard and fast time that we need to leave just to plant the seed in your head right now we do know where we're going but we're not going to let everyone know but we do know where we're going so when we start marching let's just all stick together because what are we here for we're here to love and support each other i didn't mean to answer that question but i think it's a really important answer <laughs> We're here to love and support each other. So let's all stick together when we go. Are we coming back here at the end? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I would say no. We're going to a pre-designated destination. And from that point, uh, we're going to be there. And then from there, uh, I was planning on going home. I, I don't know what everybody else is planning, but real quick, real quick. Oh yeah, where we're going does have a bus route or, or easy, easily accessible to get back. If the question is, you have vehicles here, it, it, it'll be real easy to get back here and get your vehicle. So don't worry about that. I want to, um, while I have the chance, I want to, I want to read out the demands so everybody can hear me <clears throat> clearly. Release of the videotape that contains the shooting or any lead up to the shooting of Yvette Henderson. Leave without pay for Michelle Shepard and Warren Williams, the officers involved in the killing. And I want to, real quick, we want to stop the leave with pay. If you shoot somebody, if you shoot somebody, you need, a, you need to have a leave without pay and come back. Because if I got to go home because I messed up, even though it ain't my fault, I'm not going to get paid for it at a regular job. But for some reason, at their job, they, they got, I understand the police have a hard job. Yeah, but shooting, shooting unarmed people is worse than having a hard job, okay? So leave without pay for Michelle Shepard, Warren Williams, the officers involved in the killing of Yvette Henderson, while they are being investigated and ultimately the termination of Shepard and Williams from the EPD. Yeah. The, immediate, okay. the immediate return or, or destruction of all military-styled weapons. Yeah. Look, we don't need armored anti-mine vehicles in Emeryville. We don't need tanks. Well, who, who, who needs a tank? Raise your hand. Well, I, 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 that was a joke. I'm, some people may think they need a tank. No, really, you don't need a tank. And neither do they. Okay? The, the immediate return or destruction of all military-style weapons and accessories in the possession of the Emeryville Police Department. An account on what happened to Yvette while in contact with Home Depot security. An explanation regarding how she sustained the head injury on Home Depot property. Because, she, because they called an ambulance for her that never made it. it while she was still at Home Depot. Okay? And that, that ambulance never made it. Nobody ever explained how she was ever injured. And we want, we want an explanation. We want, we, and, and the reason is why she never saw the paramedics as a result of her head injury. We want the videotapes that show the shooting. Not, look, they just released an audio of, a, of the security guard. It's in the Mercury News and, and ABC7. They released a, a redacted audio tape. Redacted means they edited it. They didn't, they didn't just give us an audio tape. They edited what they wanted to edit, <clears throat> and with the spin doctors that they have, they, they, they can make anything sound like anything. And like Malcolm X said, as soon as you start believing mainstream media, you'll believe your friends are your enemies, and your enemies are your friends. So let, let's not just trust what the newspapers have to say about this. And one, and one thing I want to say real quick is like, I feel like our people, especially black people and people of color, poor people, the LGBT community are like the canaries in the coal mine. We are the first ones to be affected by the oppression and depression of a system. We are the first ones to, 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 to actually, we are the largest we are the largest community in prison, even in places like California and Pennsylvania, where we only make up 15 to 17 percent of the population. We make up 50 to 60 percent of the prison population. There, there, there's a reason for that. And you see, the, the, the justice system isn't broken. It's doing exactly what they plan. They make more money off us. They make more money off a prisoner than putting us through school. So instead of like India, where they have more engineers and have more computer programmers coming out of colleges per capita, we have more people going to prison. That's right. All right, so we, we have some, um, if you don't know the story about the o O'Shane, o Justice, we, we have some O'Shane, ju Justice for O'Shane. I want, I want to talk about it real quick, because they're going to speak real quick, but right before they, right before I, I hand over the mic to, to these beautiful, to these beautiful sisters over here, um, there's going to be a hat passed around, okay? The hat passed around is in support 
of you invest two children and if you invest family. Kick in what you can. If it's only fifty cents, kick in fifty cents. If you got if you if you well off and give us a hundred, give us a hundred. But this is going directly this is going directly to be able to feed and house the the family and the children of the woman that was murdered by the uh, by the Emeryville Police Department. Instead, I was going to explain a little bit about what happened to O'Shea, but okay. I, but it was but no. I think it'd be much better for y'all to be able to explain. I'll explain what I know real quick. Okay. I'll, I'll explain what I know real quick. So there there was an there were police undercover police officers were chasing assailants, alleged assailants, through the uh, over by the um, Candlestick Park. No, no, it was, no, no. Uh, it was the AT and T Park in in South of Market uh, down where the Giants play at. When they were, they said that the, that these assailants had broken into a car that they watched, they watched from as far, while assailants broke in and burglarized a car. After watching them burglarize the car, instead of stopping them from burglarizing the car, they let them burglarize the car and then start chasing them down the street, not in their own car, but on foot. So when these assailants allegedly turned the corner, the police turned the corner, saw O'Shea sitting in the car. And shot him. He wasn't the ones that they were chasing. He just happened to be a black man sitting in the car at the wrong place at the wrong time. And of course, they criminalized the brother. They said that he that he that he was one of the ones that broke into the car. That he had stolen property. Of course, they lied about it. Otherwise, they had to lie. They murdered somebody unjustly. They murdered an unarmed man unjustly for, without probable probable cause. Another extrajudicial killing by the police, and that was by SFPD. Because, because it doesn't matter. You see, one of the things I want to iterate really quick, a lot of people are getting killed by the police. Kelly Thomas was a white guy that was beaten to death by the police in Southern California. The, uh, the, uh, Alex Nieto was, was shot by SFPD in, in Bernal Heights in San Francisco. It's not just a black thing, but, but like I said, we are, we're, we're the canaries of the gold mine. We've been killed for a long time, and now it's just branching out. The systemic disease and the cancer disease of corruption is branching out and affecting all of America. It affected us first, but let, let me get to these beautiful ladies. And I'd like y'all to speak. We only have four minutes. We got four minutes. We have to leave in four minutes. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Angela Naji, and I'm from um, Jamaica. And I came here in 1992. Me and uh, my five children. And Oshin was the youngest of all, and um, he was a good child, never leave home. He always be mommy's boy, you know, stay at home boy. And for me to get a call at seven minutes after two o'clock one morning saying that my son was killed by the San Francisco um, police, it was very, very hard for me as a mother. Not only that, my child was murdered at 9.32 and they only they called me at seven minutes after two o'clock to tell me. Not, a, not somebody coming to my door, knocking on my door and say, okay, your son is gone or just call me give me a phone call just like that and you know i've been taking the roads ever since because you know i miss my baby yesterday was the first time seeing my car he was in my car that he was murdered you know and when i saw that car yesterday i was so devastated because to see all those bullet holes one in the head rest of the car knowing that my son got a bullet in his head and it seems as if he got one in his heart or somewhere you know, and they never let me identify him or anything like that. Which they never meant which they never mentioned that he was shot in his head. He had a bullet hole in his head. They claim they shot him in his heart. He was shot in his heart. And he was just shot up. They ambushed my brother like he was some criminal they like they were at war with someone, which they are at war with us. Yeah. Yeah. You know, look at those gangbangers over there. When you look at gangbangers, yeah. that's gangbangers right there. Yeah. So that's who you bang against. So that's who I'm banging. Yeah, I'm banging. I'm banging against your system. I'm going to keep on banging. Yeah. And you're going to get no peace yeah. until we get some justice. Yeah. You guys are the biggest gangbangers out here. You talk about gang, you guys are gang boys and blues. The pigs and blues. I, as you can see, this is real shit. This is not bullshit. This is real life. This shit. This, this, excuse my language, and I might curse quite a bit because I get and I know there's children present. So I'll try. I'll, I'll let, let me let me let me refrain because I was about to start cursing up a storm. <laughs> I'm looking at the little kids and I say, let me not curse. This is real. This is affecting real people. Real people are getting murdered. Real people: fathers, sons, daughters, mothers, 
people who would have been grandmothers. She, look, it's affected too many people. It's too much. We have to stand up. Enough, enough. is enough. Enough is enough. All right, we're about, we're, we're going to pull together. Um, the, 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 the two black and yellow banners are going to be up front, okay? Follow the black and yellow banners. Also follow this. Um, different people will be using this sound system to chant. If somebody else wants to hold banners, we have extra banners to, that you can carry. We have, like I said before, uh, if, if you have some idea of where you want to go, that's fine. We uh, we have planned this route. It, we 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 are we are going down a specific route and going to a specific designation, and that's what we're doing. Uh, I would.